Hi there, happy Sunday. Oh, ah, look as I'm pointed straight up in the air. And not at me, but that's just by the by. My camera has the weirdest ideas of where it wants to point itself. Uh, I think it's a bit high, so we'll just nudge it lower a little bit. That looks more like it's pointing at me. Oh, well this is my post Wolfest video and I haven't set the timer so I'm just going to have to kind of guess. So if it cuts me off it means I've spoken too much. But what am I wearing? I'm wearing actually a very very ancient shawl which I made in four ply and it was tricell I think and it has been all over the world with me when I was married and I used to go abroad. So this is quite a well-travelled shawl because it's lovely and fine and it just sort of sits on your shoulders. And the brooch came from Sue. That was a birthday present for me by Sue. It's a peacock. Well, it doesn't look very peacockish, but it's a peacock. Anyway, I'll start by my this morning's surprise before we get on to Woolfest. I did my DNA testing and I've always been told that we had um, French or, well, Normandy ancestors that came over as Faustian weavers. And I've also had the rumour that we were Jewish on my mother's side of the family. So I guess my DNA back today. I know they're only, they're not accurate or whatever. But I'm 57%. Irish, Scottish and Welsh and my shawl has just dropped off. I'm 27% English. I'm 9.5% Scandinavian, which is kind of a little bit of a shock that I may come from Norway, Sweden and uh, Finland. <laughs> but the biggest shock of all was that I'm 2.5% Asian, which is uh, Turkey, Iran, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Where did that bit come from? <laughs> that must be well into the past. So I'm not actually English as I claim to be. I am a mixture of British. I'm 57% Irish, Scottish and Welsh. So I'm definitely a mutt. So I'll put that on the floor. Right, I'll just rescue the shawl. I finished this off to wear at Woolfest, but it was so hot. That I just wore my purple dress on my purple cardigan. If you've seen the photographs on um, my Facebook page, Urban Gypsy Facebook page, you will see that the cardigan looks blue. And I don't know why, because it actually matched the dress. It was purple. But here goes. And, oh, I can't reach this. Oh, well, you know what it looks like. I'm not going to put it on there. It was Lolly's little wool shack. And I have sent her an email to ask if she's going to get any more of this colour because I think it's one of the most fabulous colours in the world. <laughs> and I just love the way it, uh, it finished up. Uh, she did have more of this one when I last looked, but I've actually got a, a spare set of this colour so I could make a, another shawl. If I want to keep this one, I'll make another shawl for, for Etsy. This one was, uh, these will be a bit more expensive because they took three bowls instead of the usual two because they're actually much bigger, um, as you can see. And they've got the tassels on them instead of the fringe. So I could make another one like this. Well, it may not be exactly like this because you know what they're like with these uh, colours. Yours, yours may start off purple and finish up with turquoise. It's just the way it runs, isn't it? But, so... I did put the buttons on the cardigan. I think I showed you that. I'm going to take pictures of that before the sun goes down today. But I did put buttons on. So this is going on Etsy for my lady. It's an order. But of course, because I've been so busy, I haven't had time to do it. And uh, we'll go on to the finished things before we go on to Woolfest. And, oh, I'm throwing things on the floor here. Just, have to excuse me. 
I finished off this, I think I showed you this before, that the colour went all one colour when I washed it. Because I washed it once and it went all peculiar. Anyway, I washed it again and it's gone perfectly the same all the way around. This needs to be photographed to go onto um, Etsy. I don't know what size it is, but it's much smaller than me. So those of you who are my size, I'm sorry, it won't fit you. <laughs> Look, I'm being strangled by my own shawl here. Um, I finished off my niece's cardigan. I did her the wavy sleeves like she wanted. So she had the, the more fluty sleeves. And she didn't want buttons on hers. She just wanted edge to edge. So this is the Luna Love Good pattern. And it's free on Ravelry. So it's a bit of a bee's knees to follow. But it is free. <laughs> And what am I making at the moment? I'm making this, which is the, a free pattern again from Ravelry. It's called the Gulf Coast Shrug. And I'm doing it in the cotton, which I've just thrown on the floor. Oh, don't excuse me a moment. I'm making it in the cotton that I got from um, Lolly's Little Wool Shack. It felt quite harsh in the ball and I thought, oh, I'm not going to like this. But in actual fact, it's making up quite nicely. It's a sturdy, you know, it's not soft and floppy. It's a sturdy. Um, but it's uh, done all in one up to the armholes. That's why it's looking wide. So again, this will be not for my size. It'll be for a smaller size. So that's what I'm doing. That's again for Etsy. I still haven't started my last order, but she did say she wasn't in a rush for it because the weather out there was so hot she wouldn't be able to wear it. Right, we'll get on to Woolfest now. Um, this is where we went. Woolfest in Cockermouth. That was absolutely fabulous. I hadn't been for quite a number of years and when I went last time it was a bit more rough and ready it was more it's in it's held in sheep and auction sheep and cattle auction house but um but this year they seem to have opened more of it i don't know if you can see all the stalls that there were and there was actually um nicer toilets this time which is quite important <laughs> i didn't um go in the cafe there was a Fairfield restaurant and bar there was a cafe and they had a main ring where they judged they took all the alpacas and the sheep and everything in I did take some photographs of the sheep but a lot of them didn't have signs outside saying what kind of sheep they were and what kind of so I couldn't give you any more details so if you're very shot of sheep minded you can put a note underneath the photo saying what kind of sheep they were um, it was obviously very knitting um, sort of based really. I've lost something else has dropped down now. Oh, do you know what am I like? Oh, it's there. Uh, mostly knitting, uh, but there were some absolutely fabulous fine shawls, you know, knitted in super, super fine yarn. And oh, they were so, so gorgeous. Uh, made me almost wish I could knit really. I can knit, but obviously not something that fine and that big because my shoulders would set off. Uh, but oh, there were such lovely things. And there were some um, shawls there that were so fine you could see through them. They were really gossamer. And they had uh, like beaded edges on them. Um, and some of them had um, felt little leaves, you know, hanging on the edges of them. They were so pretty. And there was lots of fair isle garments, uh, or colour work as you want to call it. In, But these were the traditional Scottish patterns, uh, you know, the absolutely chock-a-block fair isle. And uh, they were super duper. Um, there was lots and lots and lots of felting wool there. There was all kinds of spinning looms and you know, the drop spinning things, whatever they were. And um, weaving looms, there was loads and loads of weaving looms. 
Sue was quite fascinated with one weaving loom that was a simple one. It was like a big wooden piece like that with holes in and they, they had pieces of dowling put into them and you wove, you put all these long strings going down and then you wove you know into them and she was thinking like of her grandchildren would like something like that but of course they were quite expensive on the day <laughs> um, I came away with a pattern you'll see better pictures of it on um, again on my Urban Gypsy Facebook um, page and it looked absolutely beautiful it looks nothing on the pattern nothing at all on the pattern it's called Guinevere and it's a really feminine dress pattern by James Walters now James Walters if you remember used to be teamed up with a lady called Sylvia Gosh I think she was called Sylvia Kosh can't remember which and they were the first crochet books that I ever bought uh, when I was a teenager, um, a really, really ancient book on crocheting, but surprisingly enough, it's like coming back again, isn't it? It's like old times with vinegar on, as my mum used to say. If you keep something in your wardrobe long enough, it'll come back in fashion. But in my case, it, it wouldn't have fitted me if I'd have kept it, but that's another story, isn't it? But this was this. It's got 25 tiny little buttons down the front of this. And she, what caught my eye was she was wearing it with a big net underskirt. Well, I've got two net underskirts, a black one and a white one. So that gave me thoughts. I thought, ooh, I like that. It looks nothing on this picture, but she'd done it in cotton. And it was like shades of peacock blues and greens, and it looked really fabulous, yeah. So that was uh, what, what I bought. I also bought some uh, scarf rings, which were much more reasonably priced than I'd ever seen on Etsy or eBay. Um, there's one that's three, three rings, I think they're mahogany, but they're all joined together. I don't know how they do it, but it looks like a conjuring trick, doesn't it? And you put the, like the spiky bit through the shawl and then back out again. So that it fits like that and holds it all together. And then I also bought one that was made out of resin which I thought was quite sweet, it thought it would go with anything. And that's also got a, a stabber, <laughs> a stick bit here. But they're so pretty, so I couldn't resist those. But as for wool, even though there was absolutely fabulous shades of wool, there was all kinds of wool, you know, from marina to alpaca. They had rabbits there as well as the sheep. Um, I didn't really buy anything. There was some gorgeous cardigans knitted in silk. Oh, they were absolutely fabulous. Just plain with a bit of a lace around the bottom. And, um, but the silk, I mean, oh. It was three pound for a ball that was the size of like a golf ball, you know. <laughs> so you can imagine how many you would need probably to make the cardigan. You'd have to buy it in bigger hanks, of course, but I didn't look how much they were priced. Cost three pounds for a tiny little bit that looked like a golf ball got me. That was enough, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, you know, um, on the Thursday, I had a surprise. Um, Kelly rang. It was quite late on, which is unusual, because if Kelly comes to visit me, she visits me in the morning. And she said, oh, you're in, are you? And I said, yeah, I'm in. And she said, Mum's got the boy. She said, I'm thinking of popping up for an hour. So I said, oh, that's great. You know, because I always like to see company. I always like to see Kelly and everybody. And um, she arrived. Of course, I'm talking to Kelly and I've got my back towards the bay window. And the doorbell went and I said, oh, I wonder who this is. And Kelly's face was just completely dead, you know, never give anything away. I opens up the door and there's Claire, Bob Wilson, one, two, three. And Zoe, 24 carat crochet. And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And she, Zoe's like, gotcha. You didn't know we were coming, did you? And I said, Kelly's here. And she said, we know Kelly's here because Kelly was like the one who told us your address. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> what a good surprise that was. It was really, you don't expect to see people just turn up on your doorstep like that. Like, 
from all the way from Australia to see me, you know. And as usual, my house was its usual jumbled mess, you know. As you know, I have not been feeling lately, so the house has suffered badly. They were all very polite, though, and said it looked nice, but it didn't. It was very, very cluttered and very, very jumbled. Anyway, when we got to um, Woolfest, we met up again with Claire and Zoe. Not all of the time. But we, um, you know, did our own thing. We weren't, like, joined at the hip or anything. And um, Claire gave me this gorgeous skein of yarn. It's for two, two more, I think it says. Two more Valley Yarns. It's actually Australia. And it's... Um, it's like a double knitting and it's a hundred percent Australian merino superwash. So isn't that nice? It's like I don't know if you can see it. it may turn out blue again. It's not blue, it's shades of purples. That's the one. So I was thrilled to bits with that. Getting us a present from all the way from Australia. And she also gave me one of her pens. Learn to crochet online with Bob Wilson. Woo! Look at that. Yay! <laughs> so, I really, really enjoyed it all. We did step at um, Tea Bay. Uh, it's like a service station on the way up there. And it's got a really, really good reputation like, for uh, being good. You know, very clean toilets, very lovely cafe area and that so we had our breakfast there so it's like a late brunch really because we neither of us had had any breakfast so and i bought a sandwich because i didn't know what the catering facilities would be like at Woolfest they weren't that thrilling last time we went but i must admit i didn't look this time so they could have been better this time i didn't look so uh we walked round and round and round and i decided i would sit down and on my little roll later because you know i can't walk that well I decided I would sit down and um, take a photograph of some sheep. And according to the instructions on my rollator, if you pull them up with both handles, you pull it up, it locks the brakes. So I did that, locked the brakes like that. Went to get my camera, sat down on it, and it went straight over backwards. You know, talk about... I mean, I was hurting, but my pride was hurt because you're like people picking you up and... <sighs> Anyway, I came back with a souvenir. <laughs> I've got two, one on each bottom, but I'm not going to show you those. And it hurts like hell. But, you know, you, you sort of don't want everybody to fuss you, you know, and you pick yourself up and say, OK, I'm OK. And after a bit, I went, have I got a bruise to sue? And she went, yes, you've got a beautiful bruise. Lovely and purple to match your dress. Anyway, we went past the first aid tent and there was a very nice man there, very nice. And um, I said to him, have you got any arnica or anything? You know, I showed him the bruise and he said, no, sorry, we don't have things like that. And um, every time I went past after that, it was one of those things, you, you kind of, wherever you went, you sort of came past the first aid tent, you know. And um, I kept, he kept saying, are you still all right? You're not falling again? No, nope, not falling again. And we were having a bit of a laugh and a joke. Anyway, when we were going, I said, I'm going now, you'd be glad to know. I said, you don't have to look after me anymore. And he come and gave me a really big hug and a kiss. And when I turned around, like Zoe and Claire and Catherine was there from Crafting and Treats. And they were all looking at me like, you know, can't take you anywhere. You know, you're flirting with the first aid man. <laughs> but he was very nice and he did give me a wink and a kiss. <laughs> it was almost worth falling over for, really, yeah. <laughs> But um, I can say I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't get around and about much, you know. I don't um, get to see things like this because I don't have a car. And my niece is very accommodating, but she works during the week and she's only got weekends. And weekends she's got things to do. Uh, like, for example, this week, the weekend just gone, she couldn't have took me anyway because her sister came up from London. And she doesn't see her sister that often, so she likes to socialise with the children, you know, and uh, her sister, sister's husband, of course, yeah. So she wouldn't have been able to take me, even if she'd have said she would, if you know what I'm saying. So I was very, very grateful to Sue. Yay for Sue, who drove us all the way up there in her trusty Mini. 
And we were right about the roll later. It wouldn't fit in without dropping the seats down. Um, at first, Sue had said, it might fit in my boot. But when she saw it, she went, no, it's definitely not going to fit in my boot. Well, when we got there, we got a, a jobs worth uh, parking attendant. He waved us on and waved us on and we finished up. We would have been at the top of a field. Me with a row later in the field, you know, all stony bits on the pathway. So Sue says, there's no way she can do this. She can't do this, you know. So we, he sent us back down again. He said, there's a disabled car park down at the bottom. So we gets down there and this bloke's there and he's like, well, can't come in, can't come in. No blue badge, can't come in. And Sue says, she can't walk, you know, she could only walk with a row later. And he goes, well, you'll have to drop her off then and go back and park up the hill. So anyway, this other chap came across and he said, what's going on? And Sue said, she can't walk far, but she, she hasn't got a blue badge with her. I mean, we didn't say we didn't have one, but she hasn't got a blue badge with her. And he's sending her up the top of the hill and he said, oh, just park there, love. He says, I'll sort him out. So Sue said, he's not going to come and tell me to move my car, is he? And she said, no, nope, leave it with me. I'll go and sort him. He said, she can't walk, she can't walk. And this guy who told us that we couldn't park there, like he watched me struggle to get out of the car. Because when I've been sitting for a long period of time, my legs sort of lock up and, you know, you know how it is. Those of you with arthritis, you know full well, don't you? You don't need me to explain. So I'm there tottering about. And then the car park had stones. So I'm like, ah. Trying to get so I had to get hold of the front of my roll later and like bounce me along, you know. Hey, so I had an eventful day, really. But all in all, despite all my bruises, I was very happy to go there. And we will go one day or another time. As I say, we met up with Crafternoon Treats, uh, um, Catherine. We met up with another lady who's called Crocious Circle. She knew Claire. And then another lady whose name I've forgotten and so rude tapped me on the shoulder and said that she watches my uh, videos. And um, But I'm very sorry <laughs> if you're watching me. <laughs> Have I forgotten your name? Please put a little comment in the bottom saying who you were. Because I feel so rude now, I've forgotten your name. Uh, she was wearing a very nice yellow waistcoat, by the way. <laughs> so that you know who you are now, do you? But Sue enjoyed herself too. I think we all had a good time. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was because in former years, it's a long time since I've been, it wasn't as big. There wasn't as many stalls. There wasn't the variety. There were some um, yarn bowl stalls. Um, Kelly wanted one, so Kelly's managed to buy one. She's no doubt going to make a video and show you what she's bought. And uh, Christina went with Kelly and Aaliyah and uh, she bought two skeins of um, of wool and something else. So no doubt maybe she'll show those, <laughs> take a photograph or something. I don't know what she's going to do. But um, as I say, if I could have worn wool, I would have bought a lot more because there were some fantastic colours. You couldn't believe the beautiful colours of some of the yarn. Well, the wool, it wasn't yarn, it was wool that was there. They were absolutely fabulous. But I, as you know, I'm not a sock knitter and I'm not really a fine knitter. When I do knit, it has to be fairly chunky and easy to do. I used to do all that in the past. I used to do lace work, I used to do everything. But I just, I don't know why, I just can't concentrate. I can concentrate on a crochet pattern that's a bit intricate. But knitting patterns, no, I just haven't got the head for them anymore. I used to knit all lacy things of everything, but just passes me. I think it's old. Brain fade, isn't it? You get older. Doesn't, everything goes out of your head, yeah. <laughs> but some of the shawls I was looking at them, and I'm thinking, I must get my knitting machine going again. So I said to Sue, I said, next time you come, I said, we're going to sort that knitting machine out and give it a clean and get sorted. I need to read all my manuals because I've not used it for such a long time. I've forgotten. I was thinking when I was walking around, thinking, have you even forgotten how you cast on? Oh, fly landed on me. And, um, but the lovely, lovely lace work inspired me. Because I've got lace on my machine, but I've forgotten how you do it, yeah. But I've got all the books. 
I've got all the books, they're upstairs and I need to read them, get them out and read them. So that when I come to uncover my own knitting machines, then I will have um, the knowledge of you, know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's nice to make very fine cardigans or very fine tops. I know that they probably wouldn't sell um, on Etsy because they, I don't know whether they're classed as handmade when you <coughs> done them by machine, but you are hand making them because you're the one who's pushing the carriage across and you're the one who's doing all the decreasing and the increasing and you're the one who's watching it to make sure you haven't dropped a stitch. Because lace work is a bit tricky, you've got to go a lot slower. Because with it being, it's, mine runs on a card, it's a bit like the old fashioned um, barrel organ things, you know, where the music comes on a little roll thing like that with holes punched in it. Well, that's the way my lace carriage works. But you have to go across slow and then you have to check that he's not missed any of the stitches he's put together like. You know, you can put three stitches together like on one needle as you're going across to make a, a, a decrease. And then it makes like little holes at the side. So you've got to, you can't go zip, 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 zip because you could have dropped a stitch and then you can't pick it up. You've got to take the whole thing off and start all over again. So, so I tend to go slower and check that all the stitches are on the little needles, you know. But I don't know whether I could call it handmade or, I could call it handmade, I suppose. But it isn't like hand knitted as opposed to using two needles or a circular, whichever way you knit. So I don't really know. What do you think? Do you think I could call it handmade if I made anything? Because I've got absolutely loads of cones in the garage and that I bought intending to use on my knitting machine and of course never did. So that will be. I don't have resolutions as you know. But Susan I's sort of resolutions is Tunisian crochet, which we have learnt basic. And Sue's a bit further on than me, she managed to do a lacy stitch, which I haven't managed to do. And machine knit. Because that could be something for the future. I don't know what you think. <laughs> anyway, today I've going to have to rummage in the freezer because I haven't been shopping. Um, yesterday I uh, was had buddy part of the time, that's the dog from next door, because there were viewings on the house, he's uh, totally selling the house, and um, I'm just hoping it's a nice couple or nice people that come in and buy it. But we'll have to wait and see because they've just had viewings and nobody said yes I want it yet. So we'll wait to see what happens next. Um, as I say, I'm really hoping for nice neighbours. But luckily they're detached, so they're not actually right next to me, wall to wall, like next doors are. Um, so I don't hear if they have a shout and a scream. <laughs> not that Tony and Julie ever did. The only time they argued was over the hedge, because she always said Tony didn't cut it straight. You know, he always had a bit of a wave in it like that. <laughs> That's the only time I ever heard Tony and Julie have a bit of an argument. But uh, it's still not real to me, the fact that she's passed now. I still expect to see her coming bobbing round the corner, you know. It's sad when they pass so young, isn't it? You know, she was only 48, I think. 49, maybe. It's no age, is it? No age at all. As I say, you never know what's around the corner. That's why I'm determined to try to get and do as many things as I want to do. Try and go places, you know, if my body allows me to, which was, it was being a bit of a pain on, on Friday, to be honest. I painted a big smile on my face and I was looking very happy, but inside I was like, oh, <laughs> you know the feeling. But I'm determined, I'm not going to let my body spoil the rest of this summer. I'm going to grip my teeth, take my pills and go and do something. Because time is passing by. I say I'm 72 and a half now, I've put the half in now. And uh, I want to do a lot more before I pass on, you know, you know what I'm saying. I've got a lot of plans, a lot of things on my bucket list. I better hurry up and do them <laughs> There may not be much time left. Yeah, I would love to go to Edinburgh next year to the festival. 
I was talking with Catherine, you know, from Crafternoon Treats, and she said it's very much a social occasion. Lots of vloggers or podcasters or whatever you want to call them go and meet up, you know, and have a chit chat and all that jazz. And um, some of the people that I watch, they do do crochet, so I would imagine that Edinburgh wouldn't be completely knitting, you know. Um, I mean, in Woolfest, Sue was looking for some really nice crochet hooks, you know, the wooden ones that are nicely shaped and fancy and everything. Nothing. There was nothing there at all. They had crochet hooks, but very, very much the bog standard ones, you know, that you can buy anywhere. She's going to have to splash out, I think, and go and look on um, Etsy or eBay or one of these um, web pages that sells crochet hooks. But uh, she was hoping to sort of see them, you know, touch them and feel them and see how they work up, you know. Because buying them online, I mean, I've bought many a hook online and then you, it comes and I think, I don't like using it, I really don't like using it. I've given away as many as I've bought, I'm sure I have. I bought those Knit Pro ones, you know, that were all in that fancy, um, like twirly wood, it's all different colours, isn't it? They do the knitting needles as well. I bought some of those and I gave them away to a friend because I couldn't use them. They didn't have a, a throat plate, they were just completely um, round all the way down and I couldn't hold them. Because, you know, with having arthritis, I couldn't grip. I need something to hang on to. <laughs> I'm dripping down my chin. Not very ladylike, is it? Yeah, I've bought some other ones that have got handles on. Um, if the actual hook bit is short and the handle's long, I can't use them. I need the long, you know, the longer bit that goes as far as the thumb rest, really. I mean, the clover ones with the bamboo handles are great. Uh, Grace GB Maltese sent me some of those and they are great. And... Um, I've got a tulip one that was sent to me by Doris Chan when I was 70 and I've got a furls one that was sent to me by Ephraim um, which again is um, unusual to hold um, I haven't quite got into the swing of it I have used them I mean I don't just store them up and don't use them but um, sometimes they're not the size that I'm actually using and then Grace bought me a set well, I asked her to get them for me and offered to pay, but of course, Grace being Grace, she wouldn't accept the payment. And they came from either Joanne's or somewhere. And they were plasticky ones with uh, a, a handle with like a mesh on it. And they're nice to use as well. But I do tend to go back to my good old fashioned Susan Bates. <laughs> with my handle on it. Oh, oh you can't see it, I haven't brought the crosser on with my roller inside, you know, the hair rollers. Uh, I don't know where it's gone now. I don't think I brought the hook. Oh yeah, I did. It's got the inside of a hair roller. They're those long rollers that have um, a wire going through them. So I take the wire out. And as you can see, this has been on that long, it's splitting. I do have some more of these, these so. That's moved up actually because it usually sits a bit further down than that. And they are just so comfy and squashy. I like them. <laughs> I do use my other hooks as well, I interchange. But I do find that whatever I'm using, it depends which hook I use. Some um, yarns are better with the acrylic hooks. Um, again, like the Susan Bates Crystallite or whatever. And uh, some yarns are better with the metal hooks it just depends on what you're using yeah i don't like switching hooks in the middle of a project i really don't unless it's to go down a size you know to alter going at the waist or something like that but if i lose one of my well not lose misplace one of my hooks when i'm halfway through a project i really don't like um you know finding another hook the same size because don't ask me why, the tension is always slightly different, even though they're all supposed to be the same size. I do find differences between brands of hook, uh, even though they're all supposed to be a G hook or a four millimeter hook. They do vary ever so slightly. You know, you need to stay with the one hook from start to finish. Um, 
Well, that's about all I've got to say really today. Uh, except my live, um, <laughs> my live video on Saturday hit a few hiccups. I had Zoe on the phone trying to sort me out. Good old technical technology, Zoe, trying to sort me out. And I get lots of comments saying, I can't see, I can't see, where have you gone? <laughs> where did I go? I don't know where I went, but I couldn't find anybody and I couldn't speak to anybody for ages because I couldn't read any comments. And Zoe's on the phone saying, you're on the wrong page, you're on this. And then, of course, I deleted the wrong one. I had a choice of two. Deleted the wrong one. So then I had to start all over again and I'm saying, I can't get back in, I can't get back in and I couldn't, nobody wanted me. <sighs> anyway, I think that's about it. If I think of anything else at Wallfest, but you had to be there and you had to see it. And I'm sure there'll be some wonderful videos if you look on YouTube from Wallfest. There won't be mine. Zoe and Claire may have photographed, but may have videoed more. And Kelly may have videoed more. I just didn't video anything. I just was too busy sort of going, hmm, look at that, hmm, look at that. I was totally in awe of every, <laughs> everything. And of course, I kept getting my wheeler stuck in the grooves, you know, where they sluice down after the animals have been in. They have like grooves in the uh, shed. And I kept getting my, <laughs> my wheeler stuck in them. So, yeah, but all in all, very, very good day. Very happy day, despite my bruises. And thank you to Sue <laughs> for taking me. <laughs> she was tired at the end of it, really tired, because she had to drive all the way up and all the way back. And I just had to sit there and look at the scenery, and it was beautiful. If you've never been to Cumbria, it's beautiful scenery. Lots of hills and just lovely. Absolutely gorgeous, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go and I'm going to look in the freezer to see if I've got anything to eat. If not, it'll be beans on toast, which amuses everybody in America. We're talking tomato uh, beans on toast. Um, or maybe egg on toast, something like that. I can do without a big meal. I had a big meal yesterday because I uh, bought a Chinese meal. And in actual fact, I've got a portion of... Um, mixed vegetables in the fridge that I couldn't eat last night. So I can just put those with something else, can't I? Just warm them up and put them with something. That's a thought. I shall go and have a rummage. Although I'm not hungry right now. I need to tidy up. Don't tell anybody. But my house is a wreck again. Where's the cleaning fairy when you need her? Hmm? Where is she? She hiding in my camera. Because if she is, will she come out again? Do my work for me. Anyway, I'm going to go. I said that before, and this time, third time lucky, I'm going to go. But I'll just give you a quick swizzle on my, on my shawl before I go. As I said, it's very, very, very old. But if you make things yourself, then they last forever, don't they? So bye, everybody. Bye now.